everyone, I've got a confession to make. I recently had a realization. A horribly shameful realization for somebody who loves videography. Most of the videos that I take on my phone, and thus most of the videos I take, period, are taken with the front camera. Yeah, that's right. Those little cameras in the front of your phones have gotten better and better, and they're incredibly useful. Nowadays, people don't just use them for the occasional selfie or for that subtle double-check that there's nothing between their teeth. They use them to vlog, make travel videos, and some even use them to post half their waking life on Instagram. We decided it's high time to give them proper attention and take an in-depth look at their video capabilities. To find out which phone takes the best selfie videos, we tested and retested pretty much every phone we had available. So after much deliberation, we handpicked the seven best front cameras you can find on a smartphone. Although this is a top seven list, even the best camera on this list is far from perfect. These tiny cameras come with huge compromises and different cameras have different weaknesses. Price doesn't seem to matter much either, since even super expensive phones can take abysmal videos with their front cameras. For now, it's just not a factor that many companies take that seriously. And even our top pick has some serious flaws. So with that in mind, let's start from the bottom. In seventh place, we've got the Nokia 8, one of the only phones to have a 4K resolution on its selfie snapper. In good light, this camera captures great detail and it reproduces skin tones pretty well. It even records sound that's clean and full-bodied. Sadly, it's not higher on our list because it performed poorly when we tested its exposure in backlit conditions. Unlike back cameras, a front camera's main purpose is to capture your face. And instead, this one averages the exposure across the scene. That means that in backlit conditions, the trees in the background will be exposed perfectly, while your face is shrouded in darkness. Many phones were guilty of this, regardless of how good their selfie cameras were otherwise. In low light, the Nokia fared pretty poorly too, which is where our pick for sixth place fared much better. What is it, you ask? The Vivo V7 Plus. If you live in the West, you might not have heard of this phone, but it's pretty popular in Asia. A large part of its appeal comes from the features it sports at such a low price. Even though it's not higher up the list, it definitely takes the crown as budget selfie king, thanks to its great colors and how it deals with exposure in challenging conditions. It's not as detailed as some of the other phones here, but it still captures great videos. Its audio is clean, even if a little hollow. Just like any camera, these front cameras are at their weakest when the light gets low. So when the Vivo produced a discernible image even in pitch black conditions, we were pretty impressed. Unfortunately, to do so, the V7 Plus lowered the shutter speed to a point where it couldn't fit 30 frames within a second. In fifth place is the biggest upset of the phones we tested, the camera of the Pixel 2 phones. It takes such amazing stills that we expected it to rule the selfie video world, but it missed the mark in a few key video areas while the competition didn't. The Pixel 2 offers good detail and pleasant colors in proper light. The audio was pretty good too. The problems start when the light is less than ideal. First, it doesn't always expose your face well when you're backlit and it takes a while to adjust. Second, in really low light, the image is soft enough that it looks like you've rubbed butter on the lens. This is because of the super heavy-handed noise-canceling algorithm of the pixels. Third, the stabilization cancels out small hand tremors when you're standing still, but start walking and you might find yourself wishing for a gimbal. In fourth place, we have the OnePlus 5T. In contrast to the mediocre performance on the Pixel 2s, the 5T has some of the best stabilization on a selfie camera we've seen. Many cameras were bumped off this list because the footage was so jittery it made it difficult to watch. Yeah, you can put your phone on a tripod or a gimbal, but a selfie camera should produce decently steady footage when you're walking around holding the device in your hand. With the OnePlus 5T, footage is good even after you've shot back three espressos, and if your hands are steady, it can be buttery smooth. Although I'm not the greatest fan of its color rendering, the 5T handled exposure really well and never sacrificed my face for the background. Detail and audio were really good too. In our low light test, however, the image became painfully noisy, so it's definitely not our recommendation for evening videos. Our next phone may not be much better in low light, but it offers better detail and skin tones. The Mate 10 Pro was so good, it deserved the third spot on our list. It offers really solid footage when you're backlit or when lighting conditions aren't amazing. The phone also had almost no autofocus issues, which is not a given on all devices. Some cameras with autofocus fared badly because they couldn't adjust quickly enough when moving around or in a changing environment. On the other hand, 
the fixed focus ones were better at keeping the subject in focus at the expense of being a little fuzzy. As we mentioned, low light is not the Mate 10's forte, but it's alright. However, since our initial audio and low light testing is done simultaneously, it was in the dark that we discovered its Achilles heel. Audio. Audio is perhaps the only area where the front and back camera are going to be identical. And surprisingly, a budget device could have great audio recording, while a fantastic top of the line phone like this one doesn't guarantee you decent sound quality. As for the Mate 10 Pro, the audio should be way better than this. In second place is the iPhone 10. Its colors are the most lively, and even though they're not always the most accurate, they were some of the most vibrant ones we saw. Video stabilization is really weak for a phone that's so expensive and has such a good main shooter. That said, the iPhone's videos have a wonderful level of detail and the subject is always well in focus. The iPhone 10 has pretty solid audio. Unlike shooters with weaker algorithms, this one always keeps your face well exposed, even if it means the background gets blown out. In low light, the iPhone 10 also has a serious noise problem, but the light has to be really low for it to get to that point. So who grabs a top spot? Well, the S8. And the S8 Plus. And the Note 8. Okay, that's three phones, not one, but they all share the same selfie camera. So they all win. Although their resolution doesn't quite get as high as the 4K on the Nokia 8, this selfie camera offers QHD video and it has the smoothest video stabilization of all the cameras we reviewed. Of course, it's not without its flaws and you'll be making compromises here too. You can either shoot in QHD where autofocus and details are as great as they get, or you can go for the much better stabilized 1080p footage with autofocus that's not quite as good. Exposure-wise, the camera does quite well, and I was never a human-shaped blob against a well-exposed background. Despite having a single microphone with no special bells and whistles, these phones record fantastic audio that's clearly better than the other devices we tried. In low light, it also does okay, but like every other camera we've listed before it, it has a pretty serious noise problem. But hey, you can't expect much from a camera this small. So let's wrap this up. Although mostly flagship price phones made our list, remember price doesn't equal quality, especially since front cameras are not really a priority for many vendors. Hopefully that will change in time and we're already seeing a trend in that direction. Many phone makers are starting to put more effort into making their selfie photos really good. So we're hoping that they'll devote equal effort into making their selfie videos super awesome as well. If you want to know more details about how we evaluated selfie video quality or see more video samples, check out the link in the description or visit us at gsmarina.com. If you like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon below, and I'll see you next time.